Hello, it's Tuesday, October the 20th, and today's proverb is going to sound um, very forthright and easy to understand, and it is, again, hard to apply, but there's some definitions in here that might help us understand the true depth of what is being said. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6 through 7. Most men will proclaim each his own goodness, but who can find a faithful man? The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Most men will proclaim each his own goodness. That means people will have a tendency to make sure they are receiving the credit they deserve for what they have done. And if it's not being spoken by others, they will speak it themselves. And they will speak it in the very best terms. They will present their deeds without maybe the flaws and the... um, Um, questionable motives behind it, just the good outcomes. Most men are inclined to do that. But a faithful man, who can find? So faithfulness is attached to somebody who doesn't do that. Now, why would faithfulness be connected with somebody who doesn't tout their own achievements or accomplishments or virtue? Because the faithful man is not doing those things to get attention. The faithful man is not doing those things to gain acceptance. The faithful man is doing those things because it's the right thing to do. So he doesn't have the need, or faithful woman, he or she doesn't have the reason to tout their behavior to others because that's not why they're doing it in the first place. But most men are doing things to receive attention, to receive acknowledgement, to receive compensation. And then he says, the righteous man walks in his integrity. So it's attached with the faithful man. The faithful man is also the righteous man who walks in his integrity, I meaning he walks and behaves in such a way that is in keeping with his true heart and his true virtue, and that is all the reward he needs. He doesn't walk in the applause and the attention of others, but in his own integrity, because his heart is committed to the Lord. And what he does And what he says, how he acts and reacts, what he promotes or what he pulls away from is all driven by what is right in the eyes of the Lord. Now, that's the ideal standard. It's hard for any of us to achieve that, but that's what we should be striving for, not striving to get attention or to get people to think highly of us so much to the point that we will tell others about the good things we do. That's why Jesus said, you know, when you give your alms, when you do good deeds, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That's not a reference to being ignorant. It's talking about don't flout it. Don't taunt it. Don't tell everybody what you're doing. Just do it because you're doing it for the Lord. I think not only as individuals, but as churches, we should keep that in mind. You could say most churches will proclaim each their own goodness. But a faithful church, who can find? Sort of a convicting question, isn't it? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you know our duplicitous hearts and you know our constant craving for attention and acceptance and acknowledgement. We don't want to be left behind as we see others receiving accolades. We want them too. We ask you to help us to surrender our hearts to you, to Let your spirit examine our motives and our intent so we can learn to be faithful men, righteous men, who do things and say things and react in such a way because it's the right thing to do, not because it will get us a benefit of attention or appreciation or acknowledgement from others. Help us to have hearts that reflect the very spirit of Christ, for it's in his name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Tomorrow is the middle of the week, and I want to invite you to come tomorrow night to church or to listen on live stream as we talk about seven types of false teachers. It's a complimentary study to go along with our Sunday morning series on Second Peter. God bless you. Have a great day.